Topping today's news, suicides and suicide attempts up in the country. The first week of school is in the books. We hear from the Minister of Education on the vision for the new school year. BTVI president says union tensions have been lowered for now, and a prominent architect questions the design of the Abaco Hurricane Shelter. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News, and it is a pleasure to have you join us. Mental health officials say that the Bahamas is recording an alarming increase in suicides. In fact, statistics show that up to April of this year, suicide attempts increased by 86% and suicides increased by 25%. Next week, Tuesday, the focus will be on suicide prevention and awareness on Orange Alert Day. Betsy Duvalier, Assistant Director of Communications at Sandilands Rehabilitation Center, said on Orange Day, Sandilands will host a symposium to provide access to resources to help people struggling with mental health issues. Duvalier says, like in many nations, Bahamians are challenged with stress, economic difficulties, and devastating natural disasters, all of which contribute to a mental health crisis. Unfortunately, many Bahamians shy away from getting help because of the stigma and discrimination. Sandilands officials hope to change that narrative. Meanwhile, a 45-year-old man on Grand Bahama tried to kill himself yesterday. Reports say officers were alerted to the incident shortly before 10 a.m. at a residence on Bass Lane where they found the man with self-inflicted injuries to his wrist and a severed left finger. He also ingested a quantity of over-the-counter pills. He was transported to hospital for further medical attention and evaluation. Investigations are ongoing. Now that the first week of school is completed and went relatively smoothly for the most part, despite some concerns expressed by the Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson that school repairs are still ongoing in some areas and a shortage of teachers for some subjects, however, we hear from the Minister of Education, Technical and Vocational Training, Glennis Hannah Martin, on the overall vision for the new school year. We will move as a ministry department as a well-oiled engine in the delivery of education that our young people during this process where there are gaps those gaps will be closed where they are um, soaring they will soar further we want them articulate confident um, high performing and with the, the children with special needs we want to ensure they're not out there in the deep blue sea uh, which has been the case a lot on a waiting list waiting we want them all tested and placed and so we want every child in the system active, productive, and we're hoping that at the end of this school year, we're going to see some amazing results. I'm confident that we're going to see that. The education minister has commended teachers for their hard work and dedication and noted that parents will play a major part in student behavior and academic progress this school year. In mid-July, during the summer break, staffers who were members of the who are members of the Union of Tertiary Educators of the Bahamas, UTEB, they led a protest led by Dr. Anastasia Brown. They protested outside the entrance of the Old Trail campus of Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute, complaining that they have yet to receive full benefits of their industrial agreement that they signed with the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute, BTVI, almost a year ago. Thursday, Dr. Linda Davis, BTVI's president, was asked for an update on those concerns expressed by the union. So, you know, industrial relations um, um, are industrial relations, and BTVI has embraced the opportunity to partner with unions, to partner with all stakeholders. And I believe the unions would be the first to say that we have been very open amenable to working out differences. Um, I think we, the fact that we started the academic year without incident suggests to you that things have been resolved, at least at this juncture. Um, will there be no issues going forward? I, I doubt that, but you know I have a saying that a, a mentor of mine always said, in conflict sometimes the best decisions and actions emerge. And so we look forward to working very closely with unions, with all stakeholders. Uh, industry is extremely important to BDVI because without industry, of course, we would not exist. 
Dr. Davis said in addition to UTEP, PTBI has also been working with the Bahamas General Workers Union to work through the challenges there as well. Um, as I'm aware, um, the supplementary agreements have been um, um, worked out. The last one just prior to our opening on Monday spoke to the workload for instructors. And I believe, um, as indicated, um, as we um, began the semester, the academic year without incident, as far as I'm aware, um, we are on a good wicket. And so, as I indicated, we have sat to the table, as we do with both unions, not only UTEP, but the um, Bahamas General Workers Union. And we have worked through um, where there have been challenges. So I think, we're, I think we're satisfied where we are at this juncture. Um, as um, um, issues emerge, uh, we do, as all um, partners do in, in, in good industrial relations, we sit around the table and we work through those. BTVI President Dr. Linda Davis. And finally in this segment, the hurricane shelter being built on the island of Abaco that saw 50% of its trusses for the roof collapse this past weekend is supposed to be able to withstand Category 5 winds, which are sustained winds greater than 157 miles per hour. However, while appearing as a guest on Love 97's Issues of the Day radio talk show with host Christian Jones, prominent architect Michael Foster said he and others in the industry have concerns with the design of the building if it is truly to be a hurricane shelter, especially its roof. Um, architecturally, look at the eaves, you, the edge, the, what they call the overhang. Um, some architects would argue that that overhang is really assisting a hurricane, uh, the vortex, to lift a roof. Mm -hmm. So a hurricane shelter should have minimal overhang because when the wind does that, as we say called the vortex, it will lift the roof. Well, you're not making me feel any better. <laughs> as for the question you put to me, when I look at it and I say, that's a hurricane shelter, yeah. I say, that's just a building. And we hope it stands up. Yeah. Because right now there are many elements on the structure that, that need not be, look at, look at all the windows. Mr. Foster said the Marsh Harbor area of Abaco in particular will always be vulnerable to storm surges, and he explains why. You know Abaco is two islands, right? Mm -hmm. Greater Abaco and Little Abaco? No, north and south. Because in the middle of Marsh Harbor, it's a swamp. It, nature designed it that when huge waves came in, the water would make its way from one side to the next. That's why Marsh Harbor flooded so badly. And pigeon peas in the mud, no, they swamps. And over years, we filled them in. Nature didn't make it. So if you get a movement of water, it's going to erode. Mr. Foster and the host also expressed concerns about the foundation of the shelter not being built high enough to withstand storm surges like that during Hurricane Dorian, estimated to reach upwards to 23 feet. He suggested consideration should have been given to building the shelter on pilings. Last Sunday, September 1st, marked the fifth anniversary of Hurricane Dorian that saw sustained winds up to 180 miles per hour and wind gusts above 200 miles an hour, in addition to the storm stalling just north of Grand Bahama for some 34 hours. You're listening to JCN News. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.